Winter is coming. The recession might last longer than we expect. Don't be deceived by a few market rallies we saw last year. It was a dramatic start to 2023, and towards the end of the year, we might experience major storms in the stock market. So, how do we keep your head above the water? Or should we say, how to get rich in 2023 amid the recession concerns still in heart? As the recession fear was slowly sweeping into the world, many world's best investors have invested and even sold their holdings. It looks as if things haven't changed and they're not much concerned about the recession. That being said, even Warren Buffett being the so-called value investor also poured a large sum into the market. The truth is, this isn't something that's happening for the first time in history. We mean during the recession, instead of backing out and staying varied with market growth, investors took the cue to dump huge chunks of money into the market. This was the case during the 2001, 2008, and 2020 recession. Buying the dip mentality is something that's always remained in the global stock scenario for quite a long time. Investing heavily during the dip or weak economic period turned out well for all the investors. But can we jump into the boat blindfoldedly? We should rather look into some basic fundamentals that would help you play it out in an efficient manner. What is the secret to finding great stocks during recessions? The stepping stone in this is to look for a company with a durable competitive advantage. Have you noticed the pattern Warren Buffett follows while investing? He chooses companies that are trading under a value lower than their intrinsic value. This means that he would look for ventures that have the potential but haven't yet reached their maximum according to the world. Now, finding the perfect place to invest your money might sound like a great deal. On the contrary, find several stocks in the market. However, if you are in for a long game, look for the intrinsic characteristics of a business that make it different from competitors in the space. No matter how hard people try to come forward, this particular company will have the upper hand due to their uniqueness. We call them the moat. Imagine you're offered both Coke and Pepsi, but it looks like Coke is less popular than Pepsi. Oh, we're not bluffing, we have solid evidence. It's said that Coca-Cola's formula is locked in some bank in Atlantis. But can we affirm that it is in fact impossible to clone Coke? Well, it's actually easy, and many have already done that. Big Brand Moats What exactly do we mean by having a moat for a brand? It means the brand should have a competitive advantage that sets them apart from the competitors in the same space. Let's look at Coca-Cola's success saga in establishing a moat. Despite being less popular than Pepsi, Coca-Cola still remains the best-selling soft drink. Back in the 1980s, Pepsi introduced the infamous Pepsi Challenge. People were given two cans of soft drink with no brand name on it. They were then asked which one they would preferably have again. Most of them chose Pepsi, as it was sweeter than Coca-Cola. But if the drinks were given with the brand name, people would have actually preferred Coca-Cola over Pepsi. It's really easy to clone, and there's nothing special about Coca-Cola. In many cases, the competitors are much better, but it was the brand image that boosted them. So, businesses with the strongest moats are the best ones to choose during an economically weak phase. Imagine having a loyal base of customers coming back to get your product. That's how it would be for many companies who manage to build a strong brand image. Even if it's a tough time, people wouldn't go for the cheaper product. Another example of it would be cigarette brands and the automotive giant Ferrari. There has never been a dull moment for Ferrari. The sales have always been phenomenal for Ferrari. You do accept the fact that there are several cheaper yet great options available in the market, right? Yet yeah, Ferrari's demand wouldn't plummet. It's the same for luxurious brands like Louis Vuitton or Chanel. Despite the fact that they are recklessly expensive, people would still fall for them and try to own them. They don't even have to go out their way to market their brand or its quality. The title speaks for itself. At times, the truth is a cheaper and luxurious product might even be made with a similar product. But people are ready to pay a fortune for the logo and brand image. It kind of reached a phase where it has become an epitome of their social status. However, can we in fear that this bullish sentiment would last forever? On that record, keep in mind that no moat lasts forever. We in fact have to keep a tab on it. Instead of just finding brands with a strong moat and let it be, keep an eye on it. But the process isn't that simple. The truth is only a few companies survive the pressure of the current and thrive. Our main motive as an investor is to do enough market research and find out what exactly is the strong point about a venture. What would the company look like in 5 years or 10 years? 
It's our investor instinct that plays a great role in determining the growth. One big example is Apple. We know how Apple remains all the time favourite of Warren Buffett. We can say he fell head over heels for the company, and he was benefiting handsomely for pouring his money and mind into the venture within a short time. It's easy to figure out moat. You just have to look at the venture's long-term revenue, performance graph, what they have in store for the next few years, and how they have withstood the challenges that were thrown at them. Does it show consistent growth, and how good does the dividends look, can also be a tool that can be used to find whether a stock contains a general bull or bear sentiment. We have two patterns of investment, short-term and long-term. Short-term is enticing, and yes, you can go for it. But if you're in it for the long-term game, just like Warren Buffett, then you might have to keep a great deal of patience. Plucking out fruit in its nurturing stage sounds ridiculous, right? You should indeed have the patience for it to ripen. The truth is, the majority wouldn't have even figured out the potential of a stock, but you might have. After investing in it, rather than trying to hasten up things, do analysis and process how things are going for that particular stock. Most of the investors who looked out longer and invested in the long term, they could reap incredible rewards. These investors were aware of the fact that the payoff wouldn't come in maybe the next 2 or 3 years. They signed up mostly for 5, 7 or even 10 years. No one actually wants to play the long game. Like, who would prefer us becoming a millionaire or a billionaire? That's why active funds on Wall Street try to do. They try and push us into signing up for a short term. It's great potential unleashed at favourable times, and that folks would require us to invest in not just money, but patience too. Last year, Tesla experienced a major shed off. If you were an investor who signed up for Tesla stock, it would have looked like a depressing moment. But real valued investors didn't give in and patiently waited for the stock to climb back. As soon as the year 2023 started, Tesla stock started a renounce. They recovered phenomenally, and those who still continue to believe in Tesla were rather glad that they didn't take the exit door. In a nutshell, as an investor, we have to untap the long-term potential and wait till the fruit ripens. Make no haste. Make hay when the sun shines, buy during the dip and wait till it recovers which will then take the stock prices through the roof. Some companies stumble upon a slight glimpse of recession, while others are equipped to weather the storm. Quality over quantity should be your priority. Rather than having a large number of mediocre sets of stocks in your portfolio, go for numbered yet quality stocks that have the potential deep within. It's your investor instinct that should be sharpened. If you look into Warren Buffett's portfolio, you can clearly see that he has invested in few stocks that are performing well. He has immense capital, but he was patient enough to observe and choose quality stocks rather than going all in at random places. What would you guys prefer? Are you someone who finds dividends enticing? Do you think the stock market, despite the risk, would grow to be the biggest return generating system in the coming years? Drop your thoughts in the comments section below. If you've liked the video, hit the like button. To watch more such business and investors guidance content, subscribe to our channel. Until next time, see you all, goodbye.